Oh well, hello. This is fantastic. Rory, are you a Toledo man or a Segovia man? I feel like this is a question that I've been asked on quite a few times since I moved to Spain. These are two of the first places that I visited after moving to Madrid. They're both an ideal distance for a day trip from the Spanish capital. They're fairly easily accessible by bus or by train. They're both UNESCO World Heritage Sites, which are rich in cultural heritage. Now, of course, you'll remember that I've already visited Segovia. I did so a couple of seasons ago, towards the tail end of the season. There should be a link appearing in the top right hand corner of this video right about now and there's also a link to that in the description below so feel free to check that out at your leisure anyway Toledo is slightly the bigger of the two cities with a population of around 85,000 uh, and it's a city that has two main nicknames the first being the city of three cultures Jews Muslims and Christians have all either settled or ruled here at different moments in history and their influence is very easy to see as you walk through the streets and alleys and after the Reconquista in 1085 King Alfonso so fifth main Toledo, one of the capitals of Castile, which made up large parts of Spain before Spain became Spain, uh, and this gave it the nickname the Imperial City. But then the royal court moved out of Toledo midway through the 16th century, and this caused the city to lose some of its prominence, but none of its charm or beauty, as you can see. Anyway, I know you're thinking, Roddy, stop blithering and show me what it is that I need to see when I come here. First of all, Santa Iglesia Catedral Primada de Toledo. All right, stop showing off with the Spanish. Toledo Cathedral, to you and me, which is one of only three 13th century high gothic cathedrals in the whole of Spain and I'm told by Google that if you only have the chance to see one of them, then this is the one you need to see. Of course, the one day that I come here, it just has to be under construction. Secondly, be sure to check out the Alcázar, which sits at Toledo's highest point. Now, it started off as a Roman palace in the 3rd century. It was the residence of the Spanish monarchs for a while after that, before Franco turned it into an army museum, which you can still visit today. Are these guys actually for real? They're doing work on this too? Come on. Basically, the further away you go from the Alcázar, the better it looks. One of the things that stands out about the Alcázar is that each of its facades is stylistically different and this is basically because it was pretty badly damaged in both the Napoleonic invasion and the Spanish Civil War which means it underwent some pretty significant renovation work at different periods in its history. And as you're walking through the streets and to be honest with you walking through the streets is one of the best things you can do here because this is one of the most picturesque places I've ever been to. Uh, you'll find various references to El Greco who was a Greek painter who lived, worked and died in Toledo. You'll You'll find a museum named after him, there's a tourist route named after him, and of course, obviously, there's the obligatory hotel named after him. Also, make sure you have a look at the Cristo de la Luz Mosque, which is the only mosque remaining in the city. There were actually 10 at one point, uh, and this is quite unusual because it is in pretty much the same condition as back when it was built more than a thousand years ago. And you can't see too much of it unless you go inside. Really not having too much luck today so far. And yeah, if you happen to have a car, make sure you go for a drive around the ring road that kind of circles the old town, or jump on the tourist bus, which will take you up here. I mean, just take a look at this. Sorry, Segovia. I think I'm a Toledo man. This place is a total maze. Even Google Maps is struggling. The only thing I'm missing is an El Greco ice cream. Just to light you behind the curtain a little bit, I'm actually recording this at the beginning of August and you'll be watching this much later. Uh, hopefully it won't get run over here. Probably make for a good good viewing though. Um, ah yeah, it's seriously toasty. Uh, the ice cream would probably last about 10 seconds. When all the Japanese have got their umbrellas up, shielding them from the sun, what chance does a Scottish guy have? You know, I talked about the similarities between Toledo and Segovia at the start of this video and the back of this main stand really really reminds me of the back of the main stand at Gimnastica Segoviana as well. Oh well hello, this is fantastic and what did I tell you, the Alcázar looks better from further away. This is it, this is the main attraction, Club Deportivo Toledo who play their home games 
are perhaps the most interestingly named stadium I've ever come across. This is the Estadio Salto del Caballo, which translates to the Leaping Horse Stadium, uh, which was built on the site of an old military stable uh, and opened in 1973. Now this club was founded in 1928, but they've had their most successful period of their history in the last 30 years or so. They made it up to Segunda B for the first time ever in 1989, and they were also playing there between 2013 and 2018. But it was the 1990s that were the real glory years. They had seven consecutive years in Segunda, and that included a promotion playoff final defeat to Real Valladolid in 1994, and Peaky Blinders fan and Arsenal manager Unai Emery Peaky playing Blinders. as a mainstay in their midfield in the latter part of the decade. Hopefully he'll still be the manager by the time this goes out. Now the club's actually set for a second successive year in the Tercera, so those Segunda days probably feel like a million years ago now, considering how hard it is to get out of the Spanish third and fourth tiers. Now today's game is not actually a league game, but is in fact the quarter-finals of the Trofeo Junta de Comunidades de Castilla-La Mancha, bit of a mouthful, it's basically a regional cup for leading teams in the Castilla-La Mancha autonomous community. So the winners of this cup get a shiny trophy to put in their cabinet, they get a place in the Copa Federación, which is a national cup competition for lower league teams, which also offers entry to the Copa del Rey, and get this, the grand total of 3,005 euros. Don't forget the five. Real love the club's branding in line with the city. So I mentioned earlier, nickname is the Imperial City, Ciudad Imperial. And the second nickname, the city of the three cultures, Las Tres Culturas, passion, pride, and courage. I feel like I'm ready for a fight. First impressions are that this ground is way too good for Tercera. Uh, you can definitely tell these guys have been higher up the leagues. So yeah, I've just realised I've not actually said who today's opponents are for Toledo. Today's opponents are Via Robledo, which is a really fun name to say uh, if you know how to roll your R's. So they have just got promoted to Segunda B uh, for the first time ever in their history, actually. After 39 seasons in a row, 39 in a row in Tercera. How boring would that have been? Well, an early surprise has been sprung by the choice of shirt from Toledo. I was expecting them to come out in green, but they've gone for the baby blue number, which could go either way. It could go Man City, or it could go for Athletic. That was definitely for Athletic. better so far. Much better. What's that, a water break? Come on guys. It's almost 9 o'clock at night, it's only 36 degrees. What a dive. It's an Olympic standard. Honestly, football fans that appeal for that, I know they're obviously biased, but do they genuinely think that was a penalty? Always amuses me how in Spain the crowd really wakes up when there are contentious decisions. <laughs> Could be really quiet, nothing happening, even if there's chances to score. Well, they're generally quite quiet until you get some dodgy referee in. They go, edge of the box. Well played. And that was coming. I think I'm definitely this guy's lucky charm, Ruben Moreno. He scored a hat trick the last time I saw him play. And that's kick up. And that's his first goal of the season. There he goes again. Oh, two against one. Two against one. Well, that definitely looked good for the camera. And there we go. I decided this season that I'm not going to do too much in the way of tactical analysis either at half time or at full time. 
uh, tactical analysis of two teams that most of you have never really or probably never heard of before. Uh, I'm not sure it makes too much sense. So unless you write to me in your thousands demanding that you want it back, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'll speak about the game a bit more generally. Uh, I've also come to the conclusion that the less time you see my face, the more successful the video is going to be as well. Um, so yeah, 2-0 at half time. Well deserved for Toledo. I've been really disappointed with Villa Robledo. They've not had any threat going forward whatsoever. It's quite hard to you know to tell in the first game of the season. They've just got back. Uh, you know, both teams last season actually made it to the promotion playoffs. Toledo didn't go up. Uh, Villa Robledo did. So I guess in that way, there's not too much between them. But you know, Toledo finished off really, really strongly, looking really dangerous. Um, so yeah. The fans also, I think, have grown into this game as it's gone on, as I mentioned. Uh, so yeah, I've always been sitting in the main stand. I'm going to go around the other side for the second half, or I might go behind the goal. In fact, I'll probably go behind the goal, so I can look longingly at the Alcázar. Now this is the spot. I almost killed myself on a wobbly slab, but it was worth the risk. Look at the view from here. Unbelievable. Some place. Oh, we went for it. Decent effort from there. These guys are absolutely routing them. Been quite a quiet second half, apart from the two goals. But they're just playing down the gears. Four and nil. And they're away again. They're away again. I didn't mention actually. This is a two-legged tie. So be a really a really need a goal. But I really can't see it happening. I mean, just look at the colour of the sky behind the stand and everything. Is there anything this place doesn't have? I mentioned right at the start of the video that Toledo was one of the first places that I came to on a day trip when I first moved to Madrid many, many years ago. Uh, and I think I'd actually forgotten how amazing this place was. The city is absolutely spectacular. Uh, I'm sure it's come across on all the photos and on the video in general. Um, so yeah, get yourself here. If you're in the vicinity and you can come here and you've got the chance to come here, do it. It's only an hour or so from Madrid, a little bit less in fact. If you take the train, you get the high speed train through to Toledo in half an hour or so, I think. Um, you will not regret coming here. And if you're a football fan, Definitely try to make sure you're here when there's a game on. This uh, is without doubt one of the most memorable grounds that I've ever been to uh, and it's one that I will most definitely be coming back to. The view is absolutely spectacular. Just when you walk in, it's just, just wow. Uh, I've got nothing else to say. So Toledo, uh, you've definitely got yourself a new fan or at least this is a team that I'm going to have a soft spot for. Uh, I'll definitely be looking out for the results going forward. Hope you guys have enjoyed the first video of the season. Thank you so much for watching as always. Please subscribe on YouTube if you haven't done so already and get following on social media, just all the usual places. I will see you guys again next week.